Well, India has always had a twin deficit problem, fiscal deficit and current account deficit. But the good news emerging now is that our current account is fast turning a surplus. And that's because of a sharp growth in services exports. Sample this. Service exports were at 204 billion in 2019 and they have now risen to 272 billion with only the first 11 months of FY23 counted. The key component in India's services exports continues to be, of course, software exports, which have grown from about 84 billion in uh, the year FY20 to 109 billion in FY22. A smaller category called business consultancy services has grown from a minus 1.16 billion in FY20 to 7.28 billion in FY22, further to 8.6 billion in just first six months of this year. So this will possibly go to over 16 billion for the full year. Experts are guessing that perhaps part of this business consultancy inflows are from GCCs or global captive centers set up by foreign companies in India to process their middle office work, you know, work like uh, accounts, compliance, etc. Uh, rising service exports are having a huge impact on India's overall uh, balance of trade. India's merchandise trade deficit had shot up actually to about uh, 25 to 30 billion a month because of high crude fertilizer and commodity prices uh, in FI in 22, uh, calendar 22. But in 2023, not only is the good trades deficit shrinking because of lower crude and commodity prices, the surge in service exports is shrinking the overall goods and services deficit to just one or two billion dollars a month from a high of 10 to 20 billion dollars a month in 2022. So together with the fall in goods and services trade deficit and a rise in remittances from Indians abroad, the country looks set to post a current account surplus in the ongoing Jan March quarter. In fact, given the continued growth in services exports, India may report a current account surplus or a negligible deficit for the next few quarters. So the questions we are asking today is, will services exports continue to rise? And secondly, how does a current account surplus or very low deficit help policymakers in India? You know, the Monetary Policy Committee, the Reserve Bank and the Centre to boost Indian growth. To answer these, I have with me Megha Chawla, partner at Bain & Company and Arindam Sen, partner at EY. They are going to speak about services uh, exports and the GCC part. Sonal Verma, the chief economist from Nomura, will analyse the policy impact. Well, let me start with you, Megha, first. Uh, uh, what is your sense about uh, how much software exports and e within them GCC are likely to do? What are the current trends you are getting through FI23? Now, thanks, Lata. Uh, we've actually, since COVID, we've seen a, you know, a, an explosion in, in the uh, effort that organizations are putting in transformation of not just technology transformation, but all associated business processes as well. So as part of that, a huge part of that has uh, has been just hiring, just hiring talent required to drive these transformations. And when these transformations have happened, a lot of organizations in the US, in Europe, Australia have realized that the widest, deepest, and maybe perhaps the youngest talent pool is in India. As a result of that, there is a, um, a step change in how organizations have looked to India, those who were in India have uh, further expanded their presence. Those who weren't in India have uh, have been swift to set up a presence over here. And those who were on the fence and were testing the waters have decided to commit to India. This is both in the form of going to third parties to augment their workforce to, to get uh, expertise and capability to drive some of these transformations uh, across the technology layer as well as the associated business processes. But equally in the GCCs, because a lot of organizations are realizing that this is fairly core to their business. And while third parties are a, are a very important part of their ecosystem, their business ecosystem, not having their own uh, their own centers, their, their own centers leads to a bit of a loss of uh, control and a loss of ownership over fairly core capabilities across each of these areas. So we've seen this uh, take off. Interestingly, the underlying trends behind this takeoff are not temporary. Okay. Right? These are transformations that every organization is going to have to undergo. 
the relative advantage of India, which has always existed, but has now intensified given technology and some of the domains that we're talking about continue to acquire more importance in okay. the organization. And finally, it's a younger population. No, I take your point. So these are structural issues. Uh, demographics uh, in Europe and US versus India and uh, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, work, work from home or remote is now way more acceptable after COVID. Uh, well, uh, Arindam, you know, uh, until now we have heard of outsourcing in banking. I mean, banks always did that, call centers, etc., as well as, uh, uh, you know, processing. And we heard it in IT. Is it now expanding into non-financial as well? It is. And I think uh, what we are seeing is, I mean, the, there's two aspects to this outsourcing. I mean, GCC is, is really, as Megha was saying, a company's own center where they have their own people and then generally augmented by partners. And then there is a outsourcing that happens from the GCC itself to third party uh, partners that help them either in large transformations or augmenting their teams. So overall, I think as GCCs itself are growing in the country, so is their spend within the country, especially when it comes to outsourcing spend and tying up with partners. Okay, uh, so just to finish that argument, uh, uh, Megha, what do you see as growth numbers? I mean, what is the pace of growth? I think NASCON's latest numbers say that they are expecting, what, a 10 to 12 percent CAGR uh, in terms of uh, uh, GCC growth itself. But if you can give me an overall services uh, comment. See, that sounds about right, right? Today, our services exports are in the range of about 180 billion. I think NASCON publishes that number fairly frequently. We've seen the services growth to be in the 15% uh, plus range in the last couple of years. Secularly, for GCCs as well as services, we expect growth as well as hiring to continue that, that trajectory. Having said that, right, in the next couple of years, there's going to be a temporary impact of a, which just reflects the overall global economy. But like I said earlier, this is secular. We expect this growth to continue both on the revenue, the expansion within India, more, more organizations coming into India, the expansion within India and the and the accompanying hiring that's going to happen. Okay. Uh, you would agree, Arindam, that uh, yeah. we are likely to see a continued growth in services exports? We are. And, and I think it's happening right here, right now. It's been happening for the last 18, 24 months. There's a strong push to set up more and more capability centers in the country by you know various organizations across different sectors. So we are just seeing this huge strong push given you know uh, the stability of the environment the fact that other companies have already established centers and grown them to a maturity uh, level that is acceptable people are seeing this as a huge potential uh, to set up their own centers and take this forward so i uh, even for us we see this you know continuing at least through the next 18 24 months um, and as you cited the nascom report i think anywhere between 4 to 500 new centers will come up no, in percentage terms, what would it be? 12, 15, any, any number that you would internally have in mind? I, I think anywhere between 10 to 15 percent in okay. terms of sheer number of centers, because okay. the numbers already today are about 1,500. Got it. Okay, Sonal Verma, now the mac for the macro picture. Uh, it, would you believe, therefore, that uh, because the services exports have done so well, uh, we are going to be in a current account surplus, not just for this quarter? That is a given it might even continue. It's not our baseline projection uh, right now, Lata. Uh, I think a lower deficit is what we are working with right now. Um, I think there are various moving parts. Uh, now, on the services side, of course, there's a structural uptrend uh, that has continued, and we are seeing more broad basing of that. We need to bring in the current turmoil in uh, global financial system and what it means for services growth rate going forward. So we might see a moderation. Uh, I mean, it is a more resilient category, but even there, uh, you will see a moderation from a mid-teens to probably some single-digit number in the next, I would say, 12 to 18 months. Uh, the remittances component uh, typically, uh, you know, grows as the currency depreciates, uh, but if there is some impact on 
uh, U.S. tech jobs and oil prices come down in the Gulf countries, you will see like a mixed bag impact on the remittances component. Uh, on, the on the rest of the current account, uh, lower oil prices, of course, uh, helping us uh, to the extent the global slowdown spills over into domestic imports will come down, uh, but exports on the goods side uh, are likely to contract uh, even further. So ultimately, it's the net impact of all these factors. I think what is very clear is the challenges on the current account are a lot lesser than one had imagined. Um, as I said, right now we're not expecting the surplus to uh, sustain, uh, but a low deficit uh, definitely opens up uh, the policy wriggle room uh, to focus on many other issues. Oh, which brings me to your report, which was a bit sensational. Uh, one of the first ones to say that definitely RBI will pause in April. Now, uh, to scratch that point further, if you see these service exports doing very well and uh, the current account, you know, month after month, this, uh, the uh, current account looks comfortable, does that give the Reserve Bank more wriggle room? I mean, even if there is global turmoil, the rupee is not that much in danger, so we can go ahead with decoupling. I mean, even if ECB is 50 basis, we can pause. You think they can take that call? You expect them to take that call? Well, our view is uh, they are likely to pause. Nothing is definite uh, in life. Um, but I think uh, if you look at the Indian monetary policy, in any case, has been relatively uh, decoupled. Uh, and the reaction function has been driven more by local dynamics rather than FX. Um, so the view on the pause that we have is less to do with FX and more to do with the macro outlook. Now, I think you know, on the macro outlook, we did get an upside surprise on Jan, Feb, CPI, but a big part of it is statistical serials, which has got nothing to do with monetary policy. Uh, in our view, there are early signs that underlying inflation is moderating, so YOYs are still high, uh, but the core, super core uh, measure, which is core CPI excluding the commodities, we are seeing the run rate actually closer to four and a half, five percent, even though YOY is running at uh, six plus. Uh, I think monetary policy works with long lags, uh, and given we've seen an effective tightening of 325 basis point, forward-looking inflation outlook we think will surprise on the downside. So we expect inflation to average around 4.8, 4.9% FI24 versus the 5.3 the RBI has. Uh, and growth, uh, we think these spillovers from global shocks are not internalized uh, in India's uh, growth projections. So vis-a-vis -vis the RBI's projections of 6.4, we think it'll end up being closer to 5.3. So you put all of that together, I think the case for a wait and watch to assess the impact of the policy uh, is uh, the right uh, next step uh, in our view. Okay. Okay. Hold that thought. We need to take a break, but we are coming back with lots more questions on the future trajectory of service exports immediately in FY24 thereafter and what is the impact on the rupee if the Reserve Bank were to be out of step with global central banks. Coming back in a minute. यह शुरुआत तेरी अब हर जुबान पे होगी बात तेरी देखिए पहला टाटा वेमेंस प्रीमियर लीग चार मार्च से जियो सिनेमा पर बिल्कुल फ्री चाचू आज मैं पायलट हूँ because you believed in me thank you चाचू I believe in one more thing क्या कि तू मुझे एक अच्छी अदरक वाली चाय पिलाएगी <laughs> सच्चा दोस्त वही जो आपके बारे में सोचे पर्सनल लोन्स फ्रॉम आईडीबीआई बैंक बैंक ऐसा दोस्त जैसा डिजिटल इंडिया देखेगा डिजिटल टाटा आई सिर्फ जियो सिनेमा पे किसी भी स्क्रीन पे किसी भी मोबाइल नेटवर्क पे बिल्कुल फ्री सोसाइटी के लिए एक बहुत छोटी छोटी बातें हैं जिससे आप वो विक्टिम का सुन लीजिए उस पर बिलीव कीजिए और छोटे छोटे चीज़ों में उसको हेल्प कीजिए इससे भी उसका कॉन्फिडेंस बढ़ जाएगा और रियल लाइफ स्ट्रगल्स इनटू स्टोरीज ऑफ ग्रिट एंड इंस्पिरेशन 
मैंने एक साल में कम से कम पीटा का जो है मैंने 111 लड़कियों को बचा है उसमें 10 लड़कियां माइनर निकली है और बार के जो है टोटल चार सौ लड़कियों को मैंने रेस्क्यू किया मेगा इनिशियटिव टू मेक जेंडर पैरिटी एन अटेनेबल रियालिटी एच एस बी सी प्रेजेंट सी एन बी सी टी वी एटीन फ्यूचर फीमेल फोर द वुमेन्स कलेक्टिव presented by HSBC co-presented by HCL Tech knowledge partner Deloitte industry partner Fiki associate partner Reliance Industries Limited helps beat sensitivity fast sensodyne rapid relief chachu aaj main pilot hu because you believed in me thank you chachu i believe in one more thing कि तू मुझे एक अच्छी अदरक वाली चाय पिलाएगी <laughs> सच्चा दोस्त वही जो आपके बारे में सोचे पर्सनल लोन्स फ्रॉम आईडीबीआई बैंक बैंक ऐसा दोस्त जैसा एक्सप्रेस योर स्टाइल विद अ पावरफुल न्यू सी थ्री टर्बो टूडे How about listening to global market maestros before crafting your investment strategy? How about getting deep insights into their businesses from top Indian honchos before putting your money on the line? How about making every trading day profitable with strategies from the market masters, macro pundits, and chart wizards? Only one show gives you a head start to your trading day. Get ready to profit. Get ready for business with Bajaj. At these times on CNBC TV 18 and CNBC TV 18 dot com. Chachu, today I am a pilot because you believed in me. Thank you, Chachu. I believe in one more thing. Yeah. That you will give me a good drink of tea. Real friends are the ones who think about you. Personal loans from IDBI Bank. Bank is like a friend. Welcome back to Indianomics. We were discussing the stellar growth in India's service exports, which has given us, after many years, the advantage of a current account surplus in this quarter, because the services surplus is more than the goods deficit. But uh, going forward, will it continue? And how does that change policy? Is what we were discussing. I have Sonal Verma, the Chief Economist of Nomura, with me, and we were also speaking with Megha Chawla of Bain and Company and Arindam Sen of EY. Both of whom look at service exports and global captive centers in a big way. Uh, uh, ladies and Arindam, thank you very much for staying on. Arindam, just a final question to you: uh, What is the sense you are getting in terms of a likely slowdown in service exports in FY24 itself? After all, there is a lot of uncertainty in the finance space, in the banking space. You handle the non-banking centers. Do you expect those outsourcing also to slow down? Look, so I, I think so far we haven't seen anything major, especially on the non-financial services side. Um, there are some pockets where we see uh, some constraints in terms of spend, and then actually um, as a result of the economic environment. But on the flip side, Lata, what we are also seeing is that when these kind of uncertainties rise, and we've seen this before. There is a steady push to even grow GCCs and captives more because companies just see the tremendous value that they bring, the the large scale and pool of talent that they can tap into, and of course the the total cost of ownership in terms of the cost arbitrage that still exists today. So sometimes it works to an advantage where even an uncertain environment sees a huge push towards a captive center or a GCC growth, and so far. uh we see that growth continuing now of course what something may happen 6 9 months down the lane but but as of right now we're not seeing any major uh, slowdown from a gcc or a captive okay center. got that so barring any uh, you know major cataclysmic event like lehman uh, the expectation is that actually given our tighter conditions people may want to go to a cheaper center so uh, yeah. thanks for that arindam now with that backdrop uh, uh, sonal Uh, what is the sense you are getting in terms of how the currency may do if the reserve bank were to clearly look out of line with the developed country banks i think uh, the we are we have seen in fact a number of asian central banks pause 
ahead of uh, the Fed, uh, Bank of uh, Korea, uh, BNM in Malaysia, uh, and a few others. Uh, and even in cases where it was a surprise pause, uh, the currency did not penalize uh, the central bank. So, in effect, uh, the drivers of currency are more to do with the global factors than local factors. Uh, and in India's case as well, uh, you know, I do not think uh, there's going to be a material impact of what the RBI does either direction uh, on uh, FX. Increasingly, the focus is now shifting to the capital and the financial account because the uncertainty uh, and banks, uh, apart from the issues on the deposit, uh, given the current conditions are both in Europe as well as Europe, uh, US likely to tighten their lending standards. So short term trade credit, external commercial borrowing flows, uh, portfolio flows, uh, those are likely which are tightened. Uh, it is likely to uh, see some uh, tightening, that's right. So we do have an improvement on the current account uh, and, uh, you know, lower oil prices, which I think should improve mm. our macro balances uh, in FI24. Uh, the challenge now is sort of moving a bit towards the capital account, but again, nothing that should really worry us tremendously. I think, you know, we have more than enough buffers to uh, handle, uh, and I do not think uh, the RBI's decision in April, either ways, is going to have a material impact on uh, currency. No, I, I take your point that, uh, you know, current account is good in terms of I mean, being able to post a lower deficit or even a surplus, but the daily movement in the rupee will be determined by capital flows. I, I mean, I take your point on that, and external disturbances can disturb that. But given that kind of a, a skittish global uh, capital flows environment, if the Reserve Bank were to uh, pause, you know, a typical behavior of an exporter is, I'm getting 5% even if I stay with, in a two-year U.S. paper. Uh, so why, why should I bring my dollars in? Uh, likewise, uh, an importer also may hurry and buy up dollars. So do you think... The, the Reserve Bank decision, therefore, is a high-risk one, if it were to pause. Uh, no, I do not think it's going to be a high-risk uh, one. I mean, first of all, it's not clear what the Fed's path is going to okay. be in March and going forward. So just purely from an interest rate differential perspective, uh, it's actually not going to be incrementally uh, that uh, divergent. Uh, okay. And India does not actually uh, attract that much debt capital uh, anyway. No, so the flows are more either looking at India's uh, growth opportunities or, you know, you're getting flows because global risk environment is uh, quite uh, positive. So um, I actually don't think uh, it's Is going it? to be a material impact. Okay, okay. Incidentally, there were debt capital guys who, whom we spoke to earlier in earlier shows, and they said they are not coming because they're not sure of Reserve Bank's inflation fighting credentials. And therefore, the pause may worry. Uh, so I, I would disagree on that. I think uh, one needs to uh, focus on the forward looking uh, projection for inflation. So, of course, we've got an upside surprise in Jan and Feb. But if you look at the first 15, 16 days, uh, 15 days in March, uh, we've seen a material decline in food prices already. Oil prices now mid 70s. Uh, core inflation, a lot of the goods pass through is behind us. Uh, so uh, March CPI uh, headline is already tracking around five and a half percent. And April onwards, we think the number will be sub five percent uh, on headline and incrementally even on the core side. So I, I think the RBI uh, has done a good job in terms of moving uh, on the uh, policy to fight inflation. Absolutely. So we should not be questioning that. No, absolutely. Six is definitely behind us as a handle, uh, as your report said. But uh, we have uh, Megha back with us. Mega, the question I uh, wanted to end this discussion with, with you is that do, uh, I was asking Arindam as well that, are you already sensing any bit of hesitation from clients in terms of third party outsourcing or in terms of setting up their GCC? Is the uncertainty already preying? Um, Lata, I wouldn't say the uncertainty specifically with outsourcing or with GCC. Let's be clear. There is a questioning of spends today. Okay. What are they spending on? And given the near term, which we expect to persist for however long, there is a slowdown. And as a result of that discretionary spend, project spends in transformation will get impacted. Now, does that have a downstream effect on GCC or on a third party? Yes. But I don't think the question of India or offshoring or GCC is up for debate. 
what's happening is a tightening of the belt near term. We've seen this before. So if there's a project that was around customer journey transformation for a regional bank, they might actually put it on hold right now or they might post postpone it. But if you're doing something which is still mission critical, for example, if I, my compliance work, my risk work in banks, that's not going to slow down. Some of that actually happens back in India. Some of that happens onshore. So like I said, it's not a question of where it's getting done. It's not shaking confidence in India. In fact, if you look at the last couple of years, the confidence in moving to India, whether it's via the third party route or via GCCs, that's only increased. Okay. And some of it is due to unfortunate global events such as the the uh, the, the Russian uh, invasion. Yeah. But but overall, India is very much, uh, that's very much a, uh, a go-to place. Trend. Okay. Yeah. All right, got that, uh, Arindam and Mega. Thank you very much for joining in and giving us uh, uh, perhaps an optimistic turn that there is a secular service export story here, GCCs included. Uh, Sonal, uh, the final point to you, therefore, how does that change uh, policy maneuvering in India for the longer term if there is going to be even m more minor current account deficits, if not surplus? Uh, I think... Like for the very near term, so let's say over the next uh, 12 months or so, I think there's sort of a macro regime change ongoing right now. Uh, in the last uh, one and a half years, it's been more strong growth pickup, high inflation, macro imbalances, inflation. Yes. We're now getting into a new regime where uh, growth is going to become a bigger concern, whereas macro imbalances, i.e., current account deficit, uh, inflation concerns will become less of a concern. So the priority will shift towards growth. Uh, there will be challenges on the fiscal side because of the growth issues, uh, but we do think the macro imbalances will be less. Over a very sort of a medium term uh, perspective, I think ultimately we will need to see, uh, you know, a sustainable improvement on the current account, whether it's via getting a greater export market share, greater import substitution, uh, which increases also our growth potential and gets more steady, uh, you know, non-volatile capital flow. Ultimately, uh, you know, good fundamentals uh, would be the main would, would attract uh, uh, investments. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Sunal Verma. And uh, Megha and Arindam, if you are still listening to me, the key takeaway that uh, India's service export story looks like a secular, steady and stellar one. Even if there are slight dips in FY24, it's looking like a good long-term story. That will improve our macros. And while growth may uh, you know, dip a bit in FY24, it looks set for a good show thereafter. We wrap up on Indianomics. Thank you for watching.